Okay, um, welcome everyone for, uh, to this evening. Um, I'm Andrew McKinnon. I'm here on behalf of the Faculty of Sciences and also the U University of Adelaide. Um, I'm actually in my, uh, my normal job as I'm first year director of physics, so I look after most of the first year physics courses, which um, includes quite a few. Um, just before we uh, get too far into it, just a uh, couple of things I'd like to do is just uh, acknowledge the lands on which we meet. So uh, we acknowledge the Ghana people, uh, the original custodians of the Adelaide plan, Plains and the land on which we meet today. Now, uh, one very small thing, just to get out of the way too, is a bit of housekeeping. Um, if you do need to use the uh, bathrooms, they're basically out uh, the top of the um, stairs, there's signs showing you, leading you around. They're actually around the uh, other side of the building. Um, in case of an emergency and we need to evacuate, it's quite easy. We just go out the doors at the back and we assemble on the grass. Um, the beautiful thing about that is because I've now told you what we do in a case of emergency, it should not happen. Um, well, that's the plan. Okay, a little bit of an overview. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about some of the really cool things which are happening in science, in particular in South Australia. Uh, we're also going to be talking about um, why, why would you study science? Why would you study at University of Adelaide? Um, we've also got a couple of uh, real, or several really interesting um, speakers. We've got Chris Pearman, who's the director of Forensic SA, who's our keynote presenter. Um, and then we have uh, several uh, present and past students. We have Jack, Grace, Zoe and Remy. Um, and they're going to be briefly talking about um, their sort of experience. Um, we've also got a selection of uh, staff from throughout the Faculty of Sciences. And what we'll actually be doing is uh, we'll be at the end of this session, we'll be opening up to a big Q&A because I know a lot of people are going to have a lot of questions. Um, also, what we'll be doing is afterwards we'll then be uh, sort of uh, spreading out and you can ask a lot of individual one-on-one -on -one questions. So um, please uh, get ready with any questions you might have um, and we'll sort of just wait till the end. Um, because there will be quite a few. Um, and the other thing too is if you sort of like walk out of here and you go, oh my God, there was that question I forgot to ask, I'll also be giving some information about how you can get back in contact with us. So don't worry too much about that. Okay, um, I also would like to thank, there's a, a few people who have actually travelled some distance to come here. Uh, so thank you very much for making the effort and, and hopefully you do actually get something uh, very good out of this evening. Okay, now just a little bit first talking about some of the, the science which is going on in South Australia and how it's uh, really relevant to basically the, the studies that you can actually be doing here and also how the University of Adelaide is involved with some of that stuff. Okay, now food security is one of the biggest issues, or one of the biggest issues we're facing. There's a, a lot of big issues and, and science is a good place to address a lot of those. Um, we've actually got a couple of things going on. We, we have um, crop production in, in Australia. It's only about one and a half tonnes per hectare compared with in Europe. And part of that's to do with the, the, the soil, the climate. And so there's a real need to actually develop a lot of really smart technology, smart ways to actually go about doing agriculture. We've also got the fact that the um, urban sprawl has finally got to the stage that we can't sprawl any further. So we're going to have to be getting a lot smarter too with how we actually go about um, addressing the agricultural needs. Um, we've also got a lot of uh, waste issue. There's $4,000 per household, which is quite terrifying, um, which just gets wasted with food waste. You've got the um, University of Adelaide um, involved with CSIRO and PERSA. They're actually looking at how can we actually reduce this waste, how can we mitigate some of this waste. You even got research which is going on with um, some of the um, alcoholic beverage companies where they're actually looking at, well, their waste, how could you actually produce some premium liquor out of that? So they're actually looking at what is their waste product? How can you actually refine it and um, make high quality alcohol? Which is a interesting uh, um, problem to actually solve. One thing too, which um, I must, I, I, I must say, I'm uh, my area of expertise is atmosphere, atmospheric and ionospheric physics. So probably the one thing which I got super excited about was the announcement of the space agency, 
And that's uh, where there's going to be a huge growth in uh, space-related technology. Now, and that, that covers not just launching satellites, but it's how you actually go about using that information, how you can actually use that to enrich so many things which are being done. We need to be able to have the, also the understanding of um, how can we actually predict what's going on in space, because it really can affect what goes on at the ground. Solar events can have huge effects. You can basically knock out communication. You can have power stations fail. So having a really good understanding of what's going in the space and the space environment. And University of Australia has got a rich history in that. And I like to think it's one of the reasons where we have on um, lot 14, which is just where the old RIH building is, where the space agent's going to be. So it's a hugely exciting time to be, if you're interested in space, which I am, so it is a fantastic time. Okay, the, the medical research, we've got down the road one of the biggest conglomerations of uh, medical sort of research which is undergoing in the Southern Hemisphere. We've got Samory 2. And that's got some really cool, neat stuff. They've got proton accelerators, where they're going to be, be doing proton treatment, which is a way of you can actually target cancer. You can, you can target cancer with incredible accuracy, mit, minimising danger or damage, I should say, to surrounding tissues. There's a lot of research. And University of Adelaide, again, we're, we're on the leading edge of what's actually being done in that area. Energy. And, and resources, it is, we, we, we understand that it's one of the, the big dilemmas we actually have worldwide is the fact that the energy shortage, we're trying to transition and progress into using uh, renewable energies. And probably South Australia is one of the ones which has been at the leading edge. We've had a lot of investment, we've got listed there, you've got the French renewable energy companies invested $12 million into a solar farm. We've got a lot of things ongoing. You've also got the fact, too, that um, University of Adelaide, together with uh, Alcoa, is actually looking at how can they actually use some of that solar energy and refinement processes. So they're looking at some of the areas where we're using a huge amount of energy. How can we actually make that more efficient? It's a real challenge how you can actually go about doing that. Now, when I sort of talk about careers in science, it's sort of like, well, why would I want to do a career in science? What can, I act, what can I actually get out of it? Well, that's one of the really cool things about why study science, because you get to study that's something that's really interesting, and you also get the skills. And I'm going to be talking more about the skills you can actually get. And they're the skills that are going to get you a job. They're the skills which employees want and employees need. We know that 75% of the fastest growing jobs or the fastest growing areas in South Australia need STEM, need the science. You've got the top five highest paying jobs are basically in South Australia in the STEM area. So science is one of the real driving things behind getting a good job, getting a job which was rewarding, getting a job that you're going to enjoy, getting a job that pays well. Okay, science is a really good way of going about doing that. This was, uh, there was a study that was done a couple of years ago by the um, Office of the Chief Scientist. And they basically sort of went out to employees and said, what skills do you want in the workforce? And these were the, the top five skills that employees said they wanted. They wanted active learning, critical thinking, complex and creative problem solving, interpersonal skills. And this is the thing is that that is what doing a degree in science gives you. It actually gives you those problem solving skills. So this is where, if I look from my own area, where you have um, physics graduates, what do they go off and do? And they end up in this huge range of occupations. So you'll find people who have gone through studying theoretical physics. They go work for the banks. And you might go, why? Why would they do that? Because it's given them those problem-solving skills, you know, going from modelling atomic particles, doing all sorts of weird things, to modelling finance. They get well paid doing it. You also get people who go off and um, they work for the, the spy agencies. I don't know exactly what they do, they can't tell me. Um, but they go work for those, uh, I, I do actually have a, a good friend, I still don't actually know what he does. Um, and part of that is because with science you get the skills of data analysis, how to think outside the square, and that's what you get employed. You get employed for the skills you'll actually get. So you'll find in a lot of cases people will be studying something they love and they enjoy 
and then they get these skills. And it's these, sometimes they're called soft skills, but they're, they're not actually really soft, I think, really undermines them. They're actually the skills that are going to get you employed, which are going to end up leading to uh, having a good job. Now, okay, the University of Adelaide, why the University of Adelaide? It's got a rich history. It's also one of the big performers. It's basically student service-wise, we, we are very proud of the level of student service we give, especially in the sciences. We put a lot of effort into doing what we can to help students. It's a really important thing because there is a transition, we do understand, going from high school to university, which can be quite challenging. 100% of our STEM research is rated at or above world standard. Three of the biggest discoveries, the things that, um, you know, sort of like will go, wow, they were big moments, were the Higgs boson. Has everyone heard of that? Discovering the Higgs boson, the, the God particle. The other thing was gravitational waves, which were detected really recently. Gravitational waves is a little bit like, um, you know, you can, hit, you can look at something with your eyes, you can listen to something with your ears. Gravitational waves is like a completely new way to sense the universe. universe. And the last one is the source of these incredibly high energetic particles, which they could not explain. Okay, they're three of the biggest discoveries. Oops, I do apologise. I, um, I do tend to have a physics-centric point of view of the world. Um, through the biggest discoveries, University of Adelaide is one of only two universities in the entire world who had researchers that were involved with all three of those. Okay, that is a phenomenal thing. You actually have. We've actually had cases of, uh, there was a girl who'd finished doing her honours and she got the chance to go across to America and she was actually at the observatory working on the equipment when they discovered or detected the first gravitational wave. She is someone where they detected something which is like a big moment in history and she was there. She just finished honours, okay? She, she was a uh, graduate student. So there's some fantastic opportunities. For science graduates, the University of Adelaide, we're the number one in, in satisfaction for science graduates. And we're the top 150 in the world. So of all the thousands and thousands of universities, the University of Adelaide is in the top 150. Okay? And we're easily the best in South Australia for science. Okay. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to uh, introduce Chris Pearman who's the director of Forensic SA. Um, now, Forensic SA, it um, basically provides an independent scientific and um, pathology service to the justice system of South Australia in the disciplines of biology, chemistry, pathology, and toxology. A lot of sciences, a lot of ologies happening there. Okay, Chris has over 30 years experience in forensic science as a practitioner and administrator. Um, he is chair of NATA's Forensic Science Accreditation Advisory Committee and member of the executive of the Senior Managers of Australia and New Zealand Forensic Laboratories. Okay, I'd like to hand over to Chris, so I'll have a small break. So thank you very much, Chris. Thanks very much, Andrew. So my, my background's in the natural sciences and even though Andrew said that his, his background is in physics, I am going to support uh, a number of the comments that he made. So, um, regardless of what area of science you're interested in, I think um, a science degree is a valuable contribution to, uh, to society. Now, Nicole gave me a number of um, questions that uh, she thought I might like to answer. So just by way of introduction, how did I get into science? Why am I interested in science? And I think for me that was really shaped my, by my upbringing. I had a, a father who was a geology teacher, spent a lot of time in the Flinders Ranges, a lot of bushwalking. We spent our summer holidays at Port Elliot and um, it was there that I developed a love for the ocean. Um, I still remember the first time I went snorkelling. It was one of those great Port Elliot summer's days cloudy, cold, windy, wet, water was dirty, but I still, still remember diving under the water and just appreciating the tranquility, the peacefulness of being underwater and um, even though the water was dirty, you could see the little fish and the sand and 
rocks and the algae and I thought, wow, that's, that's fantastic. So I spent the um, first 20 years of my life wanting to be a marine biologist, studied botany and zoology here at Adelaide University. And um, I thought I'd go up to James Cook University and do some postgraduate study in marine biology, and, um, but I might take a break before I do that. And I was speaking to one of the professors here and he told me about a job in the police department uh, working in their forensic area. And um, so, oh, that'd be interesting. I might do that for a couple of years. And um, many, many years later, I'm still doing that. So um, one of the pieces of advice I would like to give students is to never pass up an opportunity. And I'll come back to that um, a bit later on. What do I enjoy about my work? I think um, what we do at Forensic Science is an applied science. So um, it's an analytical sciences and we do get a lot of very cool instrumentation. So if you're a scientist and you enjoy fiddling with bits of cool kit, then it's a, it's a, great, it's a, great, it's a great job. So we're using often um, cutting edge instrumentation and um, methodologies. Um, we do um, introduce, at Forensic Science SA, we've introduced a number of techniques um, far before many other places in the world. And, um, so working in a well-funded laboratory is a lot of fun. Um, and for everyone who works at Forensic Science, one of the things that everyone says about it is that you are able to make a difference to society on a daily basis. So unlike perhaps some other areas of science, scientific research where you could be working on a problem for many years, in our line of work, it's quite easy to see what you're doing on a daily basis and the people that that helps. And um, as I said, I think um, everyone at Forensic Science um, feels that as well. What do we look for employees? Um, we look for um, two things. Graduates who are good students, um, good academic record. And these days for a career, if you're working in science, then um, a postgraduate qualification. Now, um, just one of the things that Andrew was talking about, the five skills that employers um, talked about. The other thing that we look for, though, are people with those great, um, I was going to call them <coughs> emotional intelligence skills, um, but those interpersonal skills. So um, we like people who are positive and enthusiastic, but also the necessity to be able to get on with other people. Um, what we tend to do is we employ a number of people who have worked with us, so um, students who have done perhaps an honours or a PhD postgraduate study with us, or some form of um, work placement during their um, degree. When you read a, a CV, everyone works well in teams and everyone works well um, are self-motivated, um, but um, that actually isn't the case. And um, so being able to see someone working in an organisation um, alongside your other staff members is, as an employer, invaluable. The other thing is, um, these days, is uh, communication skills. So um, I think all sorts of scientists are being asked to um, justify and perhaps validate their work, being able to sell your message, being able to um, convey to um, perhaps a sceptical audience the value of the work that you're doing if you're after grant funding or for us it's being able to communicate our results in court. Um, communication is, um, in, is invaluable. And um, a lot of universities, and I know Adelaide University does this as well, this, um, they have a, a concept called the three minute thesis where um, a student will have to get up and talk about their quite complex work, sell it to a lay people in, uh, within three minutes and there are competitions around that as well. Why would you want to do a science degree? Um, well I think um, Andrew made some um, great points around that as well. I was going to, my, my three points were um, most of the, a lot of the future jobs will be based in science. If you look at things like artificial intelligence, na nanotechnology, biomedical science, and Andrew spoke about the uh, biomedical precinct down at um, North Terrace. All of the um, work in the digital economy, it's all based, all, all based on science. And even if you're not working in the area, being able to understand the science um, would set you up well. Um, science is required to solve all of the world's problems. Andrew spoke about food production. You know, we, we've got climate, climate change. Um, 
food production was another one of my points. I've lost the, um, I've lost my third one, sorry. Um, but the world's problems, you know, cynics might say that, well, that's good because science created those problems, but um, it's also necessary for science to solve those problems. Um, and I think um, science also makes you better at your job. Um, Andrew spoke about all of those, um, he called them the soft skills that, that you learn, the analytical skills, problem solving skills, um, being able to think logically, um, being able to write well, communicate your results and it doesn't really matter what job you are in, they are invaluable skills to an employer. Now, um, and just, um, Nicole was asking whether, do, do I have any advice for um, students about to embark on their um, education and career? So I think, um, as I said at the outset, never, never pass up an opportunity. Um, even if, you, um, if you've got a, a career path in mind, um, branching off to experience other things, all builds your skills, all builds your experience, it looks good on your CV, and uh, perhaps like me, you'll find a career that you never thought about. I think um, it's important not to think about going to university simply to get a degree. Um, I'd like to think that you go to university to get an education and to learn, um, set yourself up for that career so that means involving yourself in academic life, um, getting to know the post-grad students, seeing what they do. When you get a, a reading list for a particular lecture or a topic, then read, don't, just don't read the compulsory stuff, read all of the side issues around it, um, talk to other people, really develop your knowledge. Uh, if you get I spoke about industry placements. I know Adelaide University is involved in university placements. I'd really encourage people to, to take up those options. You get to, you get to see other industries. Um, but also you learn about how organisations work, those interactions with other people. Uh, but just get involved in the organisation. Go along to morning tea, speak to people. We've got a very interesting um, student with us at the moment, so we take on a number of students, but we have a, um, a young woman with us from Adelaide University, and um, she's got involved in all sorts of voluntary activities with our organisation. So um, she's one of perhaps 15 students we've got at the moment, and as the director, I know her on a personal basis because she talks to me when she sees me. We ask for volunteers. She's got her hand up. So. She has really made an impression on our organisation and I think that's the sort of way I'd encourage you to um, tackle any industry placements. And my last point is um, don't let fear hold you back and um, I know this applies to a lot of people, um, particularly uh, women. I know um, when people, or particularly women, look to apply for a job they go, I'm not going to apply for that because I can't do that and I haven't had experience in that and uh, my advice is just to give it a go, you know, you don't know how that might pan out and um, it's interesting because I talk to a number of people in quite high, highly charged, um, high profile jobs and they all say most, there are a few people who don't suffer any kind of qualms at all, but most people say in their quieter moments they have this thing called the imposter syndrome. You wake up at two o'clock in the morning you're going, really, am I really doing this job? How am I going to meet this problem in the morning? Um, so that's, everyone suffers from that, 95% of the world suffers from that, and don't let that fear hold you back. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you very much, Chris. I too sometimes wonder what am I doing here and when will they realise I'm not supposed to be here. So that's fine. Um, now I'm going to ask Jack to um, talk to you all. Um, Jack, he's just finished his uh, BSc Advanced and he's about to do an MPhil, um, which it will, he will find challenging, mainly because I'm his supervisor, um, which isn't the reason why he's here. Okay, thanks, Jack.
<laughs> um, hi everyone, so as Andrew said, my name's Jack and um, I just finished my degree studying physics. So I did a double major in experimental physics, and theoretical physics. Um, something I, I really enjoyed about Adelaide is how well connected it was. I'll keep this brief. But, um, so in my final semester, I actually did a, a research project at the Bureau of Meteorology, uh, which for me is awesome because my interest in physics personally is climate. And I want my career to move into sustainability and climate change. Uh, so to already, before I'd even finish my degree, have a research project in sort of the field that I was interested in slash potentially a employer that I'd be looking to in the future was awesome. Uh, and it just so happened that my supervisor at the Bureau um, knew someone else in Canberra um, for a scholarship that I was applying for. And that helped me secure a position getting a research scholarship um, for a month in Canberra, which I'm actually leaving for tomorrow. So I've, I've got um, a lot of these awesome opportunities which have come out of studying here at Adelaide. And I, I actually started in first year science and engineering. And that's a nice thing about um, these degrees is that they're extremely flexible. Um, I, I thought I wanted to do space when I first came to this degree. And it was like, yep, spaceships. That's where it's at. And, and by about second year, I realized that um, that's not what my passion was. My passion was actually climate change. And it was extremely easy to just move into that. And it was in second year that I started working with Andrew. Um, and yeah, really realized how fun it was. Uh, so yeah, I think that's probably where I'll leave it. Thank you. Cool. OK, that's Grace. Grace, who's uh, doing a Bachelor of Viticulture and Oleology. Yes. Um, hello, so my name's Grace. Um, I am this year going into my fourth and final year of the Bachelor of Viticulture and Oleology, um, so sort of winemaking. Um, so we are slightly different to a lot of the other science degrees because we are based out at the Wake campus. Um, but one of the great things I sort of found about the degree is first year you're here at North Terrace. So people often think you're going to miss out on the university life and the experience. Um, but trust me, you don't. First year is all about going to all the events and getting an idea of it all um, and using all of the help services that are available to you before then moving to the Wake campus, which is really, I don't, if you haven't been, unusual spot, sort of plonked in the middle of the eastern suburbs. Um, and they have a winery on site, a vineyard, um, and at that point you get to be really nice um, and hands-on at that site. Um, one of the great things I found about Adelaide as well, um, I looked into all of the other degrees around the world that offered the same thing, so places like Bordeaux and Chargon, um, and I found that Adelaide offered one of the most research-based um, degrees. So you have the opportunity to not just end up being a winemaker, which a, lo a lot of the other degrees did sort of suggest, um, you can end up in the research field as well, which is possibly what would be one of my interests, um, hence why I'm doing honours this year, um, but we'll see how that goes. Um, one of the other great things is they do offer study tours, so you get to go to places like Switzerland and Spain, um, the US, um, and all of that is kindly funded by the university, which is always nice. Um, and you do get to do a lot of tastings. We do about four tastings a week um, at university, which is very hard work, as you can imagine. Um, and again, that's all wine that you would not be able to access on a student budget. Um, so again, great, great bonus. Um, my degree is obviously very different, sort of, it's quite social. Um, we have only probably 60 students each year um, that we sort of get to know, so you do have really great friends um, that you get to meet. Again, with sciences, sometimes it can be quite intimidating, um, but a lot of those friends are, come from first year and things like that. Um, for me, after my degree, I think, um, again, one of the great things about viticulture is you get to travel, um, so I'll be scooting off somewhere elsewhere on the globe um, and getting paid to sort of work and make and drink wine, which is also good. Um, yeah, again, it comes back to the, it's a really, really good, um, highly recognised bachelor um, in this area. So yeah, that's me. Thanks, Grace. Okay. Zoe. So greetings, hi. I am doing my honours, just wrapping it up. I was actually supposed to finish in November, but as you are aware, I work with animals and animals don't care about your schedule, not at all. And so I did my undergrad in Bachelor of Animal Science, which is based up at our Roseworthy campus. And so for those of you that don't know where it is, it's probably about 45 an hour north of here, around, situated around Gawler. And so we run a fully functional sheep stud, cattle stud, we've got pigs, we've got chickens, we've got pretty much any animal you can think of, we've got it there somewhere. It, we've even got like fish. They're kind of around the corner, but they're still there. <laughs> and so I have chose to come to Adelaide because their animal subjects were more hands-on than the other ones that I've found in South Australia. 
And so in first year in animal science and in vet science, we're up at Roseworthy, and so you get one day a week, so our Thursdays you're up there, you're doing something with the animals, whether it's working with the pigs or talking to the alpacas, you're doing something. And so that was the main draw for me because I've come from a livestock background. I still wanted to have the hands-on experience with my animals instead of going into a behavior degree where, yes, you can look at the animals and stuff, but I still wanted to get in there and, you know, have a go at it. And so mm, probably the biggest thing that I can talk to you guys about is the Roseworthy campus. One of the bonuses up there is free car parking. <laughs> that, no, no, seriously. Like, the biggest problem people have, I talk to everyone, they're like, oh, catching the train, finding car parks. At Roseworthy, I'm, I, I was 10 minutes away from campus, or you can live on campus, and there's not that, not, no problem. And it's also, you meet the staff and the faculty, and it's just sort of a bit, bit more laid back. You can run into your lecturer in the cafe and just be like, oh, yeah, I had a question for you. You don't actually have to be intimidated and knock on their door. You're just like, hey, on, wait, hold up. I've, I'm here too. And so it just you stop in, say hey, and it's a friendly, easygoing atmosphere. So, mm. oh, and my <laughs> with my project, I managed to get a scholarship attached to it. And so part of that scholarship, I went to a number of industry functions and stuff. And so I would go out to a show day or I got sent to the Gold Coast. I've been around to farms and I've pretty much been all around South Australia and up and down the Gold Coast. And so what's really good is I managed to get some industry contacts. And so that is I've got potential for two or three jobs once I finish up my degree. So it's all, if you have the opportunity there, grab it. Talk to people, don't be afraid, come to events like this. You never know who you'll see. Cool. Thanks, Zoe. Um, okay, now we're gonna hear from Remy McGrath, who's a recent graduate and is a process, process technologist from Maine Pharma. Hello. It's a, the title's a little bit fancier than what I actually do, but uh, my name's Remy and I literally just finished my degree in November and it was fabulous. So I studied biomedical science here at the University of Adelaide and um, I majored in biochemistry and genetics. So I came out of school and I was like, oh my gosh, what do I want to do? And I always gravitated towards the science and originally I thought I want to do medicine because that's where, that's where I thought it kind of, that's as good as it could get. And... That I love people and that, so that's why I chose this degree because I chose this degree because I saw it as an opportunity to get into medicine later on, which a lot of people actually end up doing. Um, but why I chose Adelaide here specifically was because I saw that uh, the campus was amazing, the opportunities here are amazing, the extracurricular that they have, whether it's your sports, whatever, but they also included, just recently I did the Women in STEM program, which is awesome and you get to meet amazing people and have these um, programs that you can attend and functions and it was incredible but it was the extracurricular stuff that I knew I also needed later once I finished the, my degree because I knew at the end of the day my degree was amazing but it's what the, else the university could provide me that would help me get a job um, and so I just kind of started university and it was amazing and I made some amazing friends along the way who I still keep in touch with and it's just, it's an amazing opportunity, the, um, all the events that they have here on campus um, are very cool. So anyway, uh, I finished this year and it got a bit daunting and yeah, I finally managed to get a job, which was awesome. So I currently work at Maine Farmer, which for a lot of you um, used to be the old Falding, so it's out on Maine North Road. And I, I didn't really realise where I wanted to go with my career. I changed about five times and that's the amazing thing about my biomedical science degree was because... I knew that I didn't want to actually go into research. I love science and I love it all, but I knew that for me, um, lab schools were not, not my best skill. Uh, so I had to work out what else I was going to do. And you can choose so many different things with, especially my biomedical science degree, I was looking at genetic counselling, which is an uh, option um, at other universities. And yeah, there were so many different things. And then and I ended up here and I think, um, my goal for the future now, I don't really have goals because I change my mind so often about what I want and what I want to do. So I just, I just am taking any opportunity I can get and yeah, it's amazing. That's where it goes. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Remy. And Remy, you finished last year, like there's yeah, just... 2018, 
Okay. I, it was just funny because you go, I finally got a job yeah. after a whole month of... Okay. <laughs> okay. High expectations. Um, okay. Now, um, what I'm going to do is just go through some of the commonly asked questions. So we, we know some of you might have a few questions. So, you know, we will definitely give you an opportunity to ask lots of questions. Um, now, when we talk about R degrees, you, often when you look up there, you look and you think, oh, God, that's really daunting, that's, that's overwhelming, I don't know what to pick. I know there are some people who had as their first preference, first preference one of the um, name degrees. And the name degrees are a Bachelor of Science which has a focus in a particular area. And you may have not quite got the ATAR you're hoping, so you haven't yet heard anything yet. Now, one thing which a lot of people don't realise is you can go into your normal BSc in Bachelor of Science and if you've done the right courses and you're going well, you can transfer across into the name degree. So you may have not got into the name degree yet. In some cases it could be you didn't have the courses which were prereqs, which you can make up in a lot of cases, but you can always transfer. And that's one of the really cool things about a Bachelor of Science is once you've got your foot in the door, you can move around quite easily. So for that's in particular for those who perhaps sort of went, oh, yeah, I was hoping to get into space science and astrophysics. Uh, there are other things other than physics. Okay. Um, you can transfer across. Probably the one thing you want to make sure, because I know um, some people have already enrolled and they've already picked what subjects you're doing. You want to make, or well, we actually call subjects at uni university, we call them at Adelaide, we call them courses. So the terminology is one thing you need to get your head around. Um, to make sure you've picked the right courses, we're going to have some student advisors. So Jill, who's down the front, won't be for long. At the end, she'll be up the back with an iPad. So if you're not sure if you've pick the right courses, because of course, if you're going to transfer across, you've got to make sure you're doing the courses which are actually part of that name degree. So definitely speak to us, because we'd hate for you to then discover it's semester two. Oh, oops, I'm supposed to be doing that in semester one. Okay, so definitely ask questions. Um, now the other thing too is uh, there's a lot of other things with majors and double majors. Um, the beautiful thing is you don't need to pick what you're going to do yet. Um, really what only defines your major is your sort of, one of your areas of study is what you actually do in your third year. So one of the great things about science is you don't need to decide. You know, you can actually change your mind as you're going along. Um, the other thing too which I want people to understand is that with uh, preferences, if you haven't got the preference that you would have liked, um, don't worry yet, there are a lot of other ways you can sort of approach it. Okay, now this is the one thing you need to know, that the first round of offers um, will basically be emailed to the address which was on your SATAC application. Um, so if you've moved house, um, hopefully you forwarded your address or it might have a little bit of trouble of getting to you. Um, you'll receive the offer for the highest preference that you qualify for. Okay, now, and there's a couple of different options you can actually do. You can, you can accept that preference, you can accept it and um, be open for more preferences. You can sort of uh, defer it and be open for higher preferences or you can reject it and be open for higher preferences. Now, the one thing I want to make sure you understand is that if you don't explicitly say that, okay, I'm going to accept it but I still want to be considered for other higher preferences, we won't actually offer you a higher preference unless you do say that, oh yeah, I still do want to be included. Okay, does that make sense for people who have accepted their preferences yet? Okay, so that's got the six possible responses. If you're happy with your offer, oh, select accept. Um, if you get an offer for a lower preference, you can still select accept, but you wish to be considered for higher. Okay, now the other thing too is there could be some people who didn't quite go as well as they would have liked in year 12 and they haven't actually got any offer. They didn't quite get the, the, um, what the cutoff was. Now, one thing which will actually be occurring is that um, we'll be actually looking at people who maybe didn't quite get the ATAR you needed, but what courses did you do? And so that's when we'll look in. And if you, for instance, you know, had, had done quite well with some science and maths courses, but you picked something else that you didn't go that well at, and that's what's dragged you down, we'll actually look at you and we'll actually be organising. So do people need to contact us? Okay, we'll be contacting you 
to arrange an interview, okay, or an appointment, to come in so we'll actually talk about you. Because in a lot of cases, it could actually be science is a place for you, you just didn't quite pick the subjects which would have really shown what you're capable of at year 12. So don't, you know, think it's the end of the world. Definitely, the number one thing is definitely talk to us. 